All right, let's go straight back to our guest, Reverend Kevin Annette. And you can go to his website and see all the documentation, even all the mainstream news articles going, yeah, half the kids died, 40 to 60% died, but, you know, it's no big deal. The government loves you. Pedophile, scum, filth, uh, just profiteers. They Slavery never ended, ladies and gentlemen, and it's been in every culture until people stand up and say no, and those are little tiny pieces of history where evil isn't in total control, but evil's always clawing at the door trying to get in. And I just pray to God that people will realize how much evil is around us and that it's not just stagnant, it's growing. All right, sir, let's specifically uh, continue with... uh, you know, the key points of what's going on and then what it's metastasized into. We know this stuff never goes away. Uh, you know, the government now admits, yeah, half the kids die that we have, but you know, that's just how it is. Children will die. I even have a newscast a few months ago. We played out of, uh, what, Oklahoma where the guy's just arrogantly going, children will die. Well, and they go, but yeah, they're dying every day in just this town alone in CPS. And he goes, they will die. That's just how it is. They will die. It's just kind of an attitude of kill them all, let God sort them out. Uh, please continue, sir. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, if you go to my website, you'll see an interview with a woman called Irene Fable. She's 75 now, but she was a little girl in the 1940s in a, in a Catholic residential school in Saskatchewan. She describes, and this was a CBC television broadcast last July, she said that she stood in front of a furnace and watched a newborn baby being thrown into the furnace by a priest because it was a product of rape. The priest had raped one of the young girls. They took the baby and just threw it in the furnace. We've had uh, you know, dozens of people describing that kind of thing happening. So it isn't just children dying. They're being deliberately murdered. And uh, you know, none of these people have ever been brought to trial. And frankly, we think the only way they're going to be brought to trial is if uh, Aboriginal people set up their own courts. People in, in, in Canada set up their own courts and, and put the government and church on trial because they're not okay. going to do it to themselves. You're saying the main three branches uh, of state approved religion up there are involved in it. And I'm not trying to... You know, single out one group, but, but I want to know who the ringleaders are. Who is, which group is most powerful? Uh, the, uh, the, the the division you were in, or was it the Catholics? Who was it? Well, ultimately, this whole model of the residential schools was set up by the Vatican in the 1880s. Uh, it's yeah. called the Duryea Plan to, to to basically establish these these residential schools, and the government and the Protestant churches copied it. And that was but a more United modern Church- version of what Cortez did. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the buck stops with the Vatican and the Queen of England. Uh, she's the head of the Church of England, and those were the two churches that were the favored ones in Canada. The United Church was a more recent creation by the government, but it was set up clearly with the same plan. So, I mean, all three of them are equally culpable, but ultimately, you know, this is a uh, this issue has to be taken to Rome and to London, England, because that's where all of this plan originated, and it can continues to be carried Well, over. I mean, look at what the Catholic Church is today. I mean, there's some estimates that half of them are pedophiles. Mm-hmm. The the, uh, the 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 priest. I mean, this is just unbelievable. I, you know, again, I have the CBC News articles. I have a big stack of articles where they admit, yeah, forty to sixty percent of the children die in our custody, but but we're good. I, I mean, imagine any other industry, any other government, any other. I mean, imagine if citizens half their children died they'd be like banned parenthood you know but instead the state and i have the textbooks they teach in england the u.s and canada they teach social workers the family's a disease that has to be eradicated well you know it's amazing that that uh well it isn't amazing that they got away with this crime because in canada you know the population is taught to think of themselves as subjects of the crown not as citizens but as subjects who kind of operate according to the whim of 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 you know a few people in power and when you're raised in that way, as slaves, basically, it's it's hard for people psychologically to challenge these churches and governments. Oh, I know. But I most- have Canadians. I have Canadians yeah. email me when I'm reading the CBC or or uh, you know mainstream news saying the Queen is in control. She's exercised her governorship. She has now mm-hmm. basically overthrown the government because they didn't do what she wanted. And and, and like you said, they, they they did it in Australia a few decades ago. I mean, and then they have all these TV shows acting like they have no power. And then the Canadians send me emails saying, you're making this up, it isn't true, we're in control of our own government. Go ahead. Well, no, it's clearly that people here aren't in control at all. I mean, to give you an example of that, in British Columbia, the police don't have any independent power to lay charges. It's the Attorney General through the Crown Councils. They're like district attorneys up here. Uh, the Attorney General gets to decide who is charged and who isn't charged, which means the party in power, and in essence the Crown, 
can uh, decide to prosecute people, can uh, urge the police to lay off p- people who are their friends. I mean, it's a completely top-down system of hierarchy, and there's no real experience of democracy here in Canada. Well, that's right. So it, he... Go ahead. You know, that's why these crimes of genocide can be gotten away with so easily. Well, yeah, that's why you can uh, you could have a government official pushing the plunger down to blow up the World Trade Centers, and the Attorney General is not going to indict him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that kind of thing. I mean, you know, the more I uncover, it's like peeling back the onion skins. It's like uh, each crime is even more unbelievable than the first. And it, to give another example, like in these Indian hospitals, um, they were having uh, some of these Nazi doctors, we found documentation showing that under the MK Ultra program, they were using... Uh, you know, in the in the mind controlled experiments funded by the CIA, they were doing that for over 50 years here in Canada with children from orphanages, residential schools. Tens of thousands of these kids died alone. In, yeah, in that was uh, Doctor Ewing Cameron ran a That's facility right. that held 4,000 sh- people at one time, and they would uh, CPS white kids, black kids, uh, uh, you know, Native Americans, didn't matter, and ship them to Canada. And Canada. Uh, in three different major bases, was the main... And this is all declassified. It's on mainstream TV, folks. Mm-hmm. D- do you understand? This is who we're dealing with. Please continue. I mean, you're not just saying Paperclip or MK Ultra. Uh, I mean, this is all real. Tell them. Well, yeah, and, and, and it, it, there is that history that's been documented, but what people don't see is, like, there's kind of an attitude of, well, that all ended in the 80s, you know, and we're much better now. We're looking at all this stuff. But it isn't true at all. It just goes underground. It goes. It starts operating in different ways. Uh, one of the things that we found out is that a number of these hospitals are still operating, and uh, they're still doing the same kinds of programs. There's in, in Vancouver, what the police regularly do is they go and scoop a lot of homeless people off the street, and they simply disappear. You never see them again. That's happened to a number of people I know. And uh, we know it happens to Aboriginal women. They're targeted. Um, you know, one of the, the things we've established is that there's, uh, you know, the whole organ trafficking and snuff film industry utilizes a lot of, Native people on the west coast of Canada. And that's where a lot of these disappeared women and children are going, you know, into that. And there's a lot of collusion, especially by the the RCMP and the police in that. You're absolutely right. Man, I tell you, it is just, it is just off the charts bad. Uh, you, you know, it's not a feeling of powerlessness because I'm here on the air Speaking to millions of people, you, you've got a radio show in Canada, you know, you've written books, and, and you've done some good. You, you, but, but imagine the good that would have been done if more people would have been as aggressive as you've been, Reverend. We wouldn't have this. And, and, and that's mm-hmm. philosophers and historians have said a million times in different ways that all that evil needs to triumph and win is that good people do nothing. And yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm well, going to tell you, right, listeners, right. I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, you know, I, when I did this, it was step by step. I just, uh, you know, it started for me by the, the church officials saying, look, you've got to close this food bank, stop letting Native people speak from your pulpit. Well, there's no way I would close a food bank on 300 hungry Native families in the middle of winter. I mean, I just couldn't do that in, in my conscience. And uh, once you follow your conscience and, and not what people are telling you to do, it leads you eventually to this. But uh, I had to look at myself in the mirror every day, and there's no way uh, they didn't, there was the expectation that I would simply cooperate and, and close the door and turn a blind eye to all of the, all these crimes that were still happening. And, um, you know, all my colleagues were, were finding the way to do that, and I simply couldn't do it. So I, I, I don't think that anyone of conscience would have acted any differently. But for some reason, in, in Canada especially, there's a fear of confronting these churches as if they have something to do with God, which I don't believe they do. Absolutely. I am. Um... I don't even know what to say. I, I do my research, Reverend. All I do is research. All I, I can't even go to sleep at night now. And, and I have nightmares when I am asleep because I know it's all real. I know it's happening. Uh, you know, one example, back in 1999, 